Hi everyone, and it's uh, great to have uh, another opportunity to share with you. And uh, if you haven't heard Nigel's sermon, which uh, obviously he preached on Sunday, and uh, a link to it was also um, present on Tuesday's email, it's, it's really great. And it's a great encouragement uh, for us to meet together again as church. And I kind of want to continue that encouragement looking at our verses from the end of Acts 2, uh, verses 42 to 47. And I was thinking, do I read them or do I not? Well, there's only a few verses, but so I will read them just to remind us of, of them. So um, verses 42 to 47. Are you ready? Here we go. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All of the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, uh, if you're a follower of Jesus, you are part of that number who are, are being saved. The, the, the word for being saved uh, used here and in other places in the Bible is a, is a, a present continuous word. So we are be being saved. We are Our salvation is continuous. And, it, and in a sense, it has to be. And the reason it has to be is because, well, we continually mess up. You know, we're still part of this... Um, uh, narrative of sin I suppose but the narrative of salvation is working alongside us and God's grace is bigger and overcomes and defeats uh, sin in our lives so take courage in that but I'm not talking about that today even though I've just mentioned it I'm just going to focus on one word yes one word in this whole text and uh, that is the second word that we have in English uh, they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching yes the word is devoted today and well would you like to try and um, hear it in in Greek my Greek isn't great um, it, but it's kind of pronounced proskaterio proskaterio and that that word uh, that is translated to our English word devoted well means a whole lot of stuff and I just want to explore that uh, a little bit and well what does it mean firstly to be devoted to something what are they devoted to they're devoted to the apostles teaching they're devoted to fellowship and they're devoted to the breaking of bread and to prayer so the breaking of bread is remembering jesus having communion together uh, and having things in common and the thing in common that we have together is christ and his wonderful work of salvation in our lives which is a big thing devoting themselves to prayer so that's praying uh, for themselves praying for one another and praying for the world around them and in this case it's very likely that the, the, the main focus of prayer would be salvation M mainly um, because of the context that we're reading us in uh, devoting themselves to fellowship so that's um, basically hospitality to one another that's right, eating in one another's homes, spending time and doing life together, not just about having a cup of tea after the service. No, no, much more than that, much more depth than that. And of course, the apostles' teaching. So the apostles' teaching can be found uh, in the teachings of Christ in the Gospels. And also we get a great uh, glimpse of what that looks like in terms of how they teach Jesus to the churches in the letters of Paul, and others in the New Testament as well. And so that, that's what they are devoting themselves to. But there's a particular aspect of this I want to mention, which I don't know, I, I'm quite excited about, but also um, it's, it's by way of encouragement. So proscatario, this word for devoted, this is what it means. It means to, com to continue to do something with intense effort with the possible implication of despite difficulty. So to devote oneself to, to keep on, to persisting. And 
one of the things that Nigel uh, strongly encouraged us to do in his talk on Sunday was to meet together. And there's this, this in the meeting together, there's this idea of, of uh, worshipping together and having fellowship together. Um, it's not just about uh, church, is it, on, on a Sunday morning. Um, just had a thought, which I think I'll, I'll just throw in there as well. So in Hebrews um, 10, uh, chapter 10, verse uh, 24 and 25, it says, let us not consider how we, sorry, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Fantastic. Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So in Hebrews, that, that context was uh, the context of persecution. So some were choosing not to meet together because of having a hard time. So meeting together was, was considered dangerous and difficult. So they say, don't give up meeting together. And today, we face a different context. We face a context, it's almost a pandemic context. Some would say post-pandemic, but it's not post-pandemic, it's continuing, isn't it? And our context is a context of, uh, of fear, isn't it? And, and, and worry and concern, not just for ourselves, but for the welfare of others as well. So I'm not I'm not knocking that if you if you are experiencing fear about this. I'm just saying that that's our context, and 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 I think God is speaking to us in that, saying, don't don't go up, don't give up meeting together, despite the difficulties that you face. Let's devote ourselves to to fellowship. Let's continue to do this thing that we do with with intense effort despite the difficulties that we face. And some of those difficulties are internal difficulties, aren't they? they they're anxiety and, and fear and, and maybe depression and that concern of what might, people might think of the, the state of our mental health and how we're doing and maybe even how much weight we've put on in lockdown and those kind of things. But, you know, we as followers of Jesus need to look beyond that, don't we? We... we are people who are full of the grace of God for one another and for the world around us. So let's be gracious to one another, despite uh, how we may think differently about this. So there's uh, a key thing about how important our relationships with one another are. Relationships are above rules, in a sense, because you know the, rule, the rules are changing and we are going to have different views and different interpretations of what's going to come out the other side, aren't we? Um, but the key important thing here is uh, grace in our relationships with one another, allowing people to wear masks if they want to and not belittling that and uh, those who don't want to wear masks, not being angry at them either, but being gracious to one another. So let's continue to devote ourselves to one another with intense effort with this possible implication of uh, difficulty as well. Uh, God bless you and I hope you have a great day today. Um, and uh, if you see this before Sunday, uh, I hope to see you on Sunday. I think we're going to have a fantastic time at Letton. I'm really looking forward to it. Nice warm weather, singing outside, playing a few games as well, having a good talk, having food together. Yeah, looking forward to it. Anyway, I'm rambling now. Um, God bless you and uh, bye for now.